I find that so many data engineers, data analysts, data scientists who have never managed a team often get thrown into being a head of data or director or some level of management with very little in terms of coaching and advising being provided to them as they were just high performing individual contributors. And now they're just been thrown into the deep end and they've been asked to run and manage a data team successfully. And let's be clear, running a data team successfully is hard. Actually, I recently had at least two or three people uh, somewhere, either on LinkedIn or in person, reference the fact that they feel like the default state of data teams in terms of like how they act are failures. I don't really agree with that, but I understand the sentiment. There are a lot of data teams out there who struggle to find and deliver what the business wants. I've seen people who spend way too much time uh, doing what I like to call infrastructure for infrastructure sake, is test out solution after solution after solution and never really deliver. And honestly, as I've even tried to tell them to avoid this situation, I've seen people get fired. And so I wanted to make a video titled Don't Leave a Data Team Before Watching This, where I go over some key points in terms of like what I've learned, both for leaders that I've worked with, as well as in the fact that I have had to step in as a head of data for companies and provide coaching and advising, both in terms of what should get done, as well as who should be hired and how to actually set up processes. And so let's go over a few points that I think are crucial as you're trying to really level yourself up as either head of data or some sort of leader at your company. So the first point is the business doesn't care about technology. They don't really care about how you solve the problem. I mean, that's, that's a little bit of an overstatement. I'll give some nuance here in a second. But Ethan Aaron uh, from Portable actually had a good line here. It was really intense and we'll again add nuance where he said, never talk about uh, data technology, infrastructure or queries with people outside of the data team. They just don't care. And there's a little bit of truth to that. Like uh, the example I often give is I remember being on a call with another consultant who we were replacing because they had struggled to deploy a successful data warehouse. And maybe 10 minutes into the call, they were trying to show us stuff, which for some reason was queries. And then they ran out of space in their SQL Server instance. And then they were trying to go into SQL Server and you know, the CEO's on the line, the CEO's on the line. We've got almost the entire C-suite here is they're trying to hand off what they've done. And you could just feel the tension, right? Because at this moment, right now, you're trying to hand off the work. You really should just be saying, okay, here is where we're at from a high level. Here are the problems we've run into. You can get somewhat technical in there. It's not like you can't. But if you're showing queries, like people don't need that. What people need is an understanding at a high level, like what's working, what's not working, where does you know this data come from? Where is it going? Do you have somewhere where scripts exist? How are they getting run? Things like that are important, especially if you're handing this off to another team and it doesn't risk you having this issue where like suddenly things aren't even working and that makes it look even worse. One of the points brought up by Jeff Demek was he referenced the fact that as you're kind of trying to explain maybe what you're doing to management, you want to give them the ability to ask intelligent questions, which means you should have some sort of common vernacular that you're using. Like if you, if you're deciding to call something a data warehouse, call it a data warehouse, be clear on what it does. Uh, if you're deciding to call something a data pipeline, call our data pipeline, be clear on what it does. What you don't need to do is be like, hey, in this data pipeline, you have S3, you have all these other tools in here. Go deep in depth. You know, here's where the problem is exactly with the logic. Unless it's like a CTO or someone who really, really cares, more than likely they should understand from a high level which component, if, if there's a problem, which is probably why you're on a call, is blocking a project or maybe where are you in this project? If you're doing really well, it's like, okay, we're, we built the, the data pipelines that manage this outcome, right? It might be like for this marketing uh, initiative that we're building and we're able to now show that, you know, our cost of acquisition is going down because of that. And we now need to pull in this other data from here to add in to that cost of acquisition report or whatever it might be. You want to start talking about those outcomes and maybe again from a high level reference things like data pipeline and in that common vernacular so that they can ask good questions honestly a lot of ceos and coos do understand technology i've had people talk to me about data modeling and talk to me about like hey what approach are you going to use why and so it's not like it's the end of the world to talk about this stuff but you need to be very diligent on how you bring it up it's why there's there is that whole line that let's bring it up to 10 or 30,000 feet again because it really is when on a call you have two engineers and they start going into the weeds and start talking about logic and literally talking about how they're going to program something that things can kind of get derailed people's eyes are going to start glazing over and you're going to start going in the wrong direction so do provide 
your you know, C-suite or directors or whoever you're communicating with, with enough information that they can ask intelligent questions about what's going on under the hood, but don't give them so much that they have to become a data engineer to understand what you're talking about. Speaking of data engineers, I think it's really important to be intentional with roles. I really do think there is a reason certain roles do certain tasks. It's not to say that data analysts can't build pipelines. It's not to say that data engineers should never do analysis. But when you are in any of these roles, you are very focused on delivering certain products. Data analysts, for example, are generally focused on building things that are like analysis, you know, doing some research, building dashboards, things that have like some final point. And it's usually a single final point. So if you ask that analyst to build a data pipeline, what they will build is a pipeline that just serves that one use case. Whereas if you ask a data engineer to build a data pipeline, their goal, at least a good data engineer, will be to build a generalized table that doesn't just support this one uh, use case, but maybe supports a dozen or so, or all of these cases that your company has for that specific data set. The way I like to look at it is basically the data engineer's goal is to build your core data layer. So this is kind of your core entities of data, you know, your customers, if you're healthcare providers, like very clear entities of data that don't change much. It's almost like you treat data like infrastructure. This set of data shouldn't change much. It should be very tested, should be very reliable. You have very reliable data quality checks. And then on top of that, analysts and analysts and engineers, whoever the role is above that, need to get things done quickly. So they wanna build pipelines. They're like gonna wanna build their own analysis so they can have tools that maybe help automate some of the processes. So if they need to start joining data and building on it together, they can build like I view as like leaf nodes, things that have very few dependencies on it, if any. And if they ever start getting a massive amount of dependencies on it or have business critical uh, functionality being added to it, where it's like suddenly these numbers that are being calculated are being used to like retrain models or something, then it goes back into, hey, let's have engineers look at this try to make this reliable because this needs to now be kind of maintained by them. It's not always fun as a data engineer to get a process that someone else built for multiple reasons. Well, that's my view is like, you kind of have this core data set uh, and, and processes that can have tons of dependencies on it because you build it to be reliable. And then on top of that, you have all these essentially leaf nodes that go one leaf deep where only one use case exists for this specific thing. And you're not building tons and tons of dependencies on top of that. Next, data quality will cost you. Like if you have bad data quality, it will cost you. Uh, my example that I always give is a dollar off today is a, you know, $100,000 off tomorrow. What might seem like a, a small error or issue that you're like, oh, we can ignore this for now. It's not going to be a problem. Generally, will catch you somewhere down the line, right? Because you have this error for one reason or another. Maybe it's something that's growing. Maybe it's just something that, you know, you missed one line of data that for now, that one line of data is nothing. But next month, that one line of data that you've missed is $100,000 and now you're off by a lot. And as Joe Reese, author of Fundamentals of Data Engineering puts it, you know, you only have so many at that. If you are wrong multiple times in a row, eventually management will come to you and be like, you are no longer in data, you no longer work here. Uh, or you just get put into a role where you just become less of a strategic partner because they don't trust you. They don't view you as a partner. They view you as like, hey, just give us our data. We're gonna question it a thousand times and your life's gonna be very, very hard. And so you wanna make sure that data quality and everything you build is reliable. If that means you build less stuff, that's fine. You'd rather build less things that are accurate than build you know, large quantities that are low quality. Which brings me to the next point, which is less is more. Sometimes it feels like the goal is to build thousands of data pipelines and thousands of dashboards, but I do think there is this balance where you should spend time trying to figure out, hey, how many things should we actually build how many things can we maintain, right? Every data pipeline you build, yeah, it'll run, but every once in a while, something bad's gonna happen in the back end, right? Like a source is gonna change, uh, some columns are gonna change. And as you increase the number of data pipelines you have, it increases the probability that something changes somewhere. That either means you have to now go update all of your Python 2 to Python 3. Uh, if, if your pipelines were built in Python 2, it means you have to go and change all the sources. It means something has to change. And that means if you've only got a team of three people, that's all you have. And so as you build more, it doesn't make your job easier. And the same thing goes kind of for infrastructure. You don't want to have every component uh, under the sun in your system, right? Kafka, Airflow, Dagster, Estuary, 
DBT, Coalesce, you know, just like, you don't want a smorgasbord of solutions. You want to be very clear and intentional on what you're developing, but also what you're developing on, right? The simpler your infrastructure, the easier it is to maintain. I like looking at Facebook's infrastructure because honestly, if you watch that video, there's not a ton there. Like if you look at the tools they use, they have less solutions in some cases than small startups, which have you know, Fivetran, Airbyte, Dagster, DBT. They've got a data governance solution. They've got something that's for the data catalog. They've got their data lake and their data lake house. They've got Iceberg too. And somewhere they've got a peanut, right? Like they have 30 different solutions to do one thing. Whereas Facebook has really centralized on a few components that they really believe in. And that's what they build on. So really, whether it is the number of pipelines you put out or the amount of solutions you're managing, the more you can simplify it down to just what you need, uh, the easier life is and the easier I believe it is to deliver value. And finally, it's important that you understand the business, right? Whether if you're working in healthcare, understand what people mean when they say ICD-10 versus ICD-9 versus, you know, billing codes and, and things like that, or when they're talking about insurance and eligibility, like understand what it means, not just in terms of like the definition, but like, what does it mean for the business? What does it mean, again, we're sticking on healthcare, uh, per patient per month, what if it means if it's high? What if it means if it's low? How is it changing? Like all of these things are important to understand because that helps you uh, when you see different changes in the data, make possible hypothesis and then test it and then actually provide business value because you are the person that's gonna understand the data the most. And so if you even understand how the business works at a very base level, you can provide tons of value that has nothing to do with your ability to create data pipelines. So understanding the business is what gives you that ability to have conversations with the business uh, become better more of a strategic partner with the business and just play a bigger role beyond just being this like jira desk where people pass in data requests and you have to just kind of give it to them because uh, you're not really providing any other value that's what i wanted to focus on today like if you are going to lead a data team really think about how you plan to transition from an ic to a some sort of manager or director right how will you grow people how will you understand the business more how will you have conversations with the business what is changing how do you become a strategic partner and not just keep your kind of icy mentality like I build pipelines? Like, what is the next level? With it, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.